Hi, welcome back. So today is going to be a part one of I don't know how many parts of orchid successes for the season of 2022. I will look at all of the mounts. I'll show you what's happened during this growing season. If I can remember how long they've been on the mount, I'll let you know. And did you know that Orchid Supply Store, our sponsor, also sells mounts? Uh, they sell the tree fern mounts, they sell regular mounts, and then they also sell mounts by Nature Nell. Custom designed, they are beautiful. I don't have any at the moment, but I am looking at them for a possible Vanda to go on. Not sure yet, we'll have to wait and see. But if you want a mount and check out all their varieties, go to orchidsupply.com. And while you're there, when you check out in the coupon gift certificate area, type in the code T-R-I-S-H and you'll get 12% off your entire order. So now let me get you on the mount and let's start looking at the ladies. Let's start with our beautiful BCT Hawaiian treat. There's her tag right there. And she has been on this mount, I know over a year. Let me just see how long ago. So I put her on this mount in July of 2021. Since then, she has put on this, let me move the camera just a little bit, there we go. She has grown this growth, this growth, and matured those, and then this one. So all of the ones that you see at the front, so since July of 2021, she has put on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new growths. Uh, the ones right here in the front are maturing, and again, here's some wankiness because of light direction on either side. But again, she is on the wall. I don't care. I want to see her get wild. Uh, but she does have a beautiful root system now developing. You can kind of see them coming out. She's starting to wrap around the mount. And I was a little concerned at first because I was scared that the roots would just all be aerial. But I'm happy to see that a lot of the roots down in here, if you can see in the back there, are going down into the moss. And I water her about every three to four days because what I do is I will put her into a bowl of water similar to the way I water my plants that are in moss in pots. Um, I put it up to about right here and then I just let her soak until everything is nice and absorbed. Then I drain her for a little bit, put her back on the wall. So she does get her wet dry cycle. Not sure if I'm gonna have to switch that up when we put the heat on, simply because she didn't have that problem last winter because she didn't have that many roots. So I was only lightly having to water her once a week. But this year with all these extra roots, that moss might dry out quicker once the heat is on. And then let's talk about this one. So this is three Phalaenopsis soft clouds that have been on this mount since April of 2021. Um, doesn't look like they've done much, but they have. The top one here has all of these beautiful roots that she has pushed out, as well as she's grown these two new leaves since then. Now she has lost two as well, but she's replaced it with these two. The middle one here has grown this leaf and this leaf this season, has lost one leaf and is working on lots of roots as well. And the one here at the bottom has not lost any leaves, but has grown two leaves this season. So all three of them have enough leaves in order to give me some blooms. Um, as you might remember, you need three leaves from the bottom for your Phalaenopsis to spike. So if she doesn't bloom, I don't care. I know a lot of us grow our orchids because we want the bloom, which is the ultimate goal. But at the end of the day, I have learned, keep them healthy, keep them thriving, get them really like just going at it with the vegetation and the roots and they will reward you at some point with the blooms. And since I have about, I think like two more of these, um, I see those blooms a lot. So. I like them, but if she doesn't bloom, I'm okay with that. And let me move this one out of the way and we'll talk about the last really big one we have here. So this is my Montana, uh, Montana Big Sky. Yeah, Montana Big Sky. And she has been on her mount since August, I believe. Yes, August of 2021. So a little over a year and a couple of months. I put her on this mount because if you look at the way 
that these leaves right here are. When she was in a pot, they would initially grow upright like this one here is currently. And then after a while, once they were mature, they would just lay down. Not sure why that was happening because she was literally underneath the light. So you would expect it to stay up. Was taking up more shelf space than I was willing to give her. That is when I decided to put her on a mount. So I waited for the new growth, which I have since learned. She does not start producing her roots until after that new growth has matured. So just a little tip there if you want to buy the big uh, Montana Big Sky. She's a P, uh, pot Nera Montana, I'm sorry, Montana Spirit Big Sky. But since being on this mount, this is the growth that she had started when I put her on the mount. Excuse me, Loki. Sorry about that interruption there. So this is the one she started. So she has finished this growth this season. She has pushed out a new growth here. She has a new one, which I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see. I'll just, I will do a close up so you can see it, but there's a new growth. Yeah, you can see that. New growth right there. And then while I was looking at her earlier, we have another growth coming in right down there you see that on an older growth so now she's going to have two directions of growth that is wonderful now i don't know how much of a root system she has under here i did replace some of the moss because it was getting all yunky and the way i had her initially i wanted to wire her on instead of strap her on that's how she was originally she had some roots in there, but I didn't really dig too deeply. But she has enough roots, obviously, to keep her alive because these pseudo bulbs are nice and lush. And I love how she has these little short pseudo bulbs with this big giant leaf. I don't know if that had anything to do with her trying to lay down because she was just tired of holding herself up. Oh, let's talk about Tulumnia Jurek Brown. So this one, when I got it back September, I believe, of last year, yes, September of 2021, she originally grew downstairs underneath the Grow Star Lights, which I don't recommend um, unless you're going to have it right at the lights. And the top does heat, so watch out for that. It works better for house plants or like seedling house plants, that kind of thing. I don't think it is for orchids. My opinion, if you have the Grow Star light and you love it, it works for you. I, I didn't like it. Back to the Chalumia. So once spring started, I did grow her outside. Was doing marvelously. Had this new growth right here on the side and she had a beautiful new growth right here that my nemesis, Mr. Grasshopper, decided he liked it too, so he ate it but it has continued to put out roots. Can you see the little root right down in there? I purposely didn't water them so we could really look at them, but she has some roots right in here. So there's lots of roots going on in here, and this new growth here is continuing to grow. Currently, she does hang on the wall, and there is a grow light right kind of off to the side above her. So she's still getting that nice bright light. BC Hippodamia um, has been on here um, since I believe April. Let me see if I can pull the tag out and do a cheat sheet here. Let's see. Nope, since July, sorry. July of 2021. So when I initially put her on the mount, along with the one that I grew outside, they were hanging in the kitchen on opposite sides of the cabinet between the windows. Once spring started, I said, well, let me put one outside, keep one inside. I did put the one that wasn't as strong outside because this way if I lost it, I still had this one and I ended up losing it. I don't know why. I think I just, it was too much light. Maybe it got too much sun. Maybe I wasn't watering it enough. Not completely sure what happened. I do know the grasshopper did not get it. But this one is actually two pieces. So I had ordered a kit from Orchid Web. Occasionally they do um, like tutorials that you can do through Zoom and they send you the kit and then you do it together. Well, I just ordered the kit because I wanted the mount and I wanted the hippodamia. It ended up being three plants instead of one. One got put on its own mount and then I put these two together because I thought they'd look really cute together. So this year, uh, this section here, has finished off this new growth. She, it was starting right at the beginning of the season. And then she put out a bifoliate 
and she has a little, oh, let me find it, it's that little, but she has a little itty bitty little eye looking like it's trying to swell right there. And she does have her own little root system going on right here, as well as a nice big fat juicy root coming. And then this one here finished this big growth here, but then she tried to push out two at one time and they just didn't go anywhere. And now she's working on this one here and it has its own little root system. So they're both doing rather well. I expect them to continue through the winter um, this one I water every other day simply because there's not as much moss. It's a smaller amount. It dries out much quicker. Which one? Uh, since we're talking about telumnias, well, we were talking about telumnias. We actually just talked about a cattleya. Anyway, sidetracked. So this is my telumnia variegata, and I got it in September of 2021 along with the, oh my goodness, I don't even remember. It was the other, it was another species, telumnia, and it has since gone on to orchid heaven. It just was not getting enough light. I think I got water in one of the, or two of the crowns. I don't know. I will be replacing it, but I will be waiting till spring. She looks like she hasn't done anything because literally she's had two fans since I bought her. But what she has done is she's grown one fan and uh, one fan, one leaf, and now she she is still working on that little leaf there. She's a very slow grower, as most species are. And she has a new little leaf growing right there. Do you see it kind of sticking out? But I consider this a success simply because, do you see all of the little, little root, little furry roots? It looks like string right here. See that? That wasn't on there at the beginning of the growing season. So she has roots in here. She may not be doing a lot of vegetative growth, but at least I know she has roots because those roots are starting to come out. So she does get watered every day um, because they do like their high humidity. And I do make sure that it is dry before I water her. Now, for those of you who grow the variegata in your home on a mount, would you recommend that I keep the moss damp and not let it completely dry out before I water her? Or should I continue doing what I'm doing? Advice in the comments, much appreciated. Because from what I've researched, they do like a wet dry cycle, but they like to be watered every day. You guys got a sneak peek of this one in the, I believe it was the Nadosa repot video, not sure. If I haven't posted that video yet, it'll be coming out soon. But this is my Breast of the Little Stars. So this is the one that's on the mount. I do have another one that is in a pot. It is struggling. It is basically sitting on a, there's moss and then some bark in between that plant, that plant, uh, the plant and the moss. So she's not wet, but the moss to create humidity. Um, struggling. She's already lost about five of her growths and she has about five left so if i lose her no biggie because look at the growth on this one look at all that massive growth like she's just got all kinds of new growths coming up and since being put on this mount and i don't know when but i know she's been on here at least nine months to a year um but she has shot up about five growths that she's matured none of them have bloomed yet but again i am now at, on the mindset that the bloom will come once the plant is healthy feels like it's strong enough to produce and put that energy into a spike so i will continue to make sure that they get what they need so that later i can be rewarded with the pretty show and then here is my soft clouds. I told you I had several of these soft clouds that's been on this mount since August of 2021. Excuse me, air bubble. Um, but since being put on this mount, she has lost about three leaves, but she's grown all the leaves that you see. Now, if you notice, this one here is cut off and she got a little bit of a sunburn. I don't know how. I do remember I had her underneath um, the lights at some point and I think it was just too strong maybe she was too close to it I don't know but it was kind of a sunburn type thing where it just kind of dried out and got papery the whole leaf so I just cut it down to right at the tip and I thought great she's going to go downhill from here 
but look what we have. We have a new leaf coming, as well as look at the roots on this girl. I mean, she's growing them. There's a, there was a hole that is now really getting full of roots. She's going in between all the little nooks and crannies there. Lots of growing root tips. I'm just, I, I love the way she looks. I can't wait for her to really wrap roots, just wrap, 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 wrap roots. What I'm gonna do if I ever have to take her off this mount? Well, like I said, I've got plenty of these and if I can't do it, you know what I'll do? I'll cut the stick off and stick her in a pot with the mount. Last but not least, we have our Dendrobium Lindleyi that I got from Brookside Orchid. Now she is blooming size. I was put into a little bit of a conundrum because um, she is a species again and they are one of those that do require a winter rest in order to bloom. So cool, bright, dry winters, right? With obviously a little bit of water if you see those bulbs start desiccating. Now. She decided to throw me for a loop. So she completed this beautiful growth right here with this fat, juicy bulb. And she completed this little growth right here with not much of a pseudo bulb. Then, right as I was getting ready to stop, not stop, but slow down the watering, I see a new growth which has extended a little bit. And then we have this big stonker right here coming that looks like it's gonna have a nice big fat pseudo bulb. So what I've done, I have not stopped watering her or stopped fertilizing her because she does have those two new growths. What I have done though is I have cut down on the fertilizer and the watering. So instead of, and I, I soak water her, meaning I just dunk her in some water, let her sit for about 10, 15 minutes and take her out. I was doing that every day um, and the water did have fertilizer in it at about 300 parts per million. And I was flushing her about once a week. Now what I do is I still fertilize her at about 150 parts per million, but instead of soaking her, I just run the water, mainly by these no, new growths here, so that I'm not doing too much water and getting it confused. Now, if that's not the right thing to do, let me know, but that's from what I've, again, read on the interwebs, that is the best way to keep your new growths moving along and possibly still getting the orchid to rest. I don't know how that works. So that is the first video of, I'm not sure how many, I make it sound like I have all these orchid successes, but you know how sometimes you're going through and you find something you're like, oh, you know what, that is a success because last year it was doing this or um, this was going on during the season and I did this, so now it's doing well. Um, I might come across some of those. I do know that um, obviously I'm gonna do one on just Phalaenopsis because I have so many of them. I might split it up between the summer fowls and the hybrids, but I just did an update on the summer fowls. So if you guys don't wanna see another one of those, just let me know in the comments below. Um, but there will be one on the Phalaenopsis, um, some of the Oncidiums, because some of those are doing fantastic things. Um, the Cattleyas, and and then I'll just kind of bunch everybody else in together. So let me know what your season successes are for 2022 in the comments below, and let us know if you had one that was kind of struggling and you brought it back from the edge and now it's just thriving for you. Those are the interesting stories, right? I hope you have a beautiful day and we'll see you on the next one.